Podcast. Hello guys and welcome to the Lee Stafford Education Facebook Live. I'm Lee Stafford and I'm going to be your host for the next hour. So we've got some guests in the studio, so let me introduce them to you. First of all, we've got Adam Sloan, my old mate from Essex, the godfather of British Barber in the main man. Thanks for coming down tonight, Adam. Uh, we've got two special students from Hells Owen College. We've got Jade and Rosie. And what they're doing here tonight, the last Facebook Live that we did, um, we put a competition out there for the person that could replicate the haircut that I did, which was the... The Discon Log. The Discon Log. <laughs> and Jade, she stayed up that night that I did it till 12.30 at night. It was the first haircut that she ever did. Uh, and I was so impressed, it was her first haircut, and she stayed up till 12.30 at night that um, she won the competition and she's here today with her friend Rosie. So they've joined us, so thanks for coming. You've come from where today, Birmingham? Wolverhampton and Birmingham. Wolverhampton, but this is their first time in London today, is that right? Absolutely. Yeah, so welcome girls, welcome to London. Uh, we've got my cousin here, Aaron, who's helped produce the show, <laughs> aka Karen. It's going to stick now. So, <laughs> and last but not least, we've got my main man on the camera. There he is, Luke. Thanks, buddy. I embarrassingly. <laughs> okay, so... Let me share with you what we're going to do tonight. We're going to do a haircut called the Long Tease. And it's a mashup of two haircuts that we teach at the Lee Stafford Education Academies. It's the one length below, and it's the long graduation, but slightly on the asymmetric, with a sprinkle of um, graduated bob. It's a really simple haircut. It couldn't be any more simple. It couldn't be any faster. And even though it's quite a kooky look, it's something commercial. It's something that you could do on your clients. So it's a long haircut, this one. So if you come over, I'll explain the sectioning so far. So the sectioning is our classic horseshoe section. It goes from the recession on uh, both sides of the head, and it comes all the way back to um, below the crown. Then what we've done, we've just taken out a triangle there. And you'll see why that's quite evident once we uh, have cut the top. Um, and the measurements on this horseshoe section is exactly the same uh, measurements that we usually use with our horseshoe section. So that is whatever the distance is from that section there to the hairline, the top is going to be that and half again. So it's quite a classic mathematical um, maths that we use for a lot of our horseshoe sections because it just gives a really nice marriage to the top and the underneath of the haircut. Do you want to say something? Yes, please. Um, hi, guys. It's Aaron. Don't call me Karen. <laughs> Karen. Um, Hashtag don't call me Karen. So it's really important at this stage of proceedings that everybody can hear us and everyone can see us and we're the right way up and all that. Um, I just want to show you guys Smash the love or the like or the wow or the happy or the, ang I mean, if you want, you can be angry. If you want, you can smash that one. <laughs> Just smash these buttons and let us know you're all watching because it's really important that we get out to as many of you as possible and that really helps. And so share you. if you like what you see as well, guys. So the last uh, piece of this pre-section, if you come around here, Luke, yeah. you can see just here, we've taken a section that's just in front of the ear up to that horseshoe section on top and that's pinned out of the way, okay? So that's the pre-sectioning. So very, very simple and a very classic way of sectioning in the Lee Staff and Education Academies, apart from this little triangle that we've taken out. Do you want me to get top. in there and have a little look at it? What, the triangle? Yeah. yeah. So it's just, a, normally it would come all the way around there, the horseshoe, right, yeah. but we've just taken out that triangle there. Cool. So what I've done, I've, I've, I've pre-cut this a little bit. So the only thing that I've done so far is the one length below. So this is the classic way that we uh, cut a one length below at our academy. The only difference is, is rather than cutting it all square at the back, so it falls with a slight A-line, with this we've just, um, we've just cut it very, very square. So I've just taken off that A-line. So just a classic one length below, the kind of first haircut that you really do at the academy. 
You tried this one so far? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so you've done this one already, yeah? yeah? And how did you find it? It's really good. Yeah? Quite easy. Easy, simple, <laughs> right? Okay. So that's what we've done so far. So what we're going to do now, now you could leave this completely one length. And I still want it to have the feeling of one length because, you know, even though the, a one length below haircut is the first haircut that you do in college, it's still very, very relevant today. You know, there's a lot of young, cool people that are still wearing their hair a one length below. So I want to keep that feeling of a one length below haircut. But because I'm going to be doing some graduation at the front, I want to put a tiny bit of graduation at the back just to balance it out. Even though it's going to be very, very disconnected, what I'm doing on here is going to be very, very disconnected from what's happening on the underneath. But it's going to be graduated, so I want to put a little bit of graduation in there just to kind of sink it up a little bit. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a, a section that runs right the way down the middle to begin with. So I'm just going to get this out of the way nice and neatly so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to put a clip in there. And then we're gonna, and this is just your kind of usual thickness that you would take a section. Do you want me to come around that side? Yeah, then? come around this side, Lou. So it's not too thick, not too thin. Just a classic size section right down the back of the haircut. So if you want to come this way now, yeah. Lou, because I'm gonna pull this out, you can see what I'm doing. So when I pull this out from the head, this is cut now quite similar to how we cut our graduated bob in our academies, uh, even though this is a very, very long version of it. So I want to kind of sort of use the guide from kind of the occipital bone. So as I pull that out, I'm looking at the guide there on the occipital bone. So I'm not taking loads of hair off of this but I just want to get a little bit of graduation on it, but still keep that one length feeling to it. So I'm just pulling it straight out from the head. The head is in a very natural position, and I'm just cutting a very, very simple line all the way down. And I'm gonna let that fall. So when I comb this now, you'll see that we've still got that that one length line, but we'll have a very, very subtle bit of graduation on the bottom of that, which will make all the difference. But to be quite honest with you, you could leave it completely one length. You could, and it would still look really good. So what I'm gonna do now, the next section is I'm gonna take it from the corner of that triangle on top, and we're just gonna be pulling this out in exactly the same way as that first section. So I'm going to be pulling it straight out from the head. I'm not over directing it into the middle. Just straight out. And again, if you come right there, Luke. Yeah. So if I pull this all the way out. Again, you can see that. Can I see that? Let's get that in there. You can see that now, you can see that here on the underneath there. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. So I'm going to go, if you come around this side, Luke, mm -hmm. you can see I'm going to take this section now from the corner of that triangle. So what we're going to have, we're going to have that whole section through the back there that is all pulled out vertically from the head. So now I'm going to come this way. So if you come over there again. Do you want to take a question, Lee? Yeah, mate. Uh, I've got a good one from uh, Samantha Prothero. Yeah. She asks, uh, what makes you section the hair the way that you do? Um, that's a very, very good question. The reason why we do this pre-sectioning, it's a bit like sat nav. You know, when I first started hairdressing and I didn't take this, I didn't do the pre-sectioning like I am now, there was many, many times that I would get lost through a haircut and I would start to sweat and panic and I would get through it. Um, 
and I'd kind of, you know, get the haircut done. And as the person walked out of the shop, I would think, you know, I, I, I didn't have a clue what I was doing there, really. I kind of blagged my way through it. Um, and I thought, they're never, ever going to come back and see me. They're going to hate this haircut. And then, lo and behold, six weeks later, they would skip through into the salon again, and they would say to me, I oh, want well, exactly the same as you did last time. And I didn't have a clue what I did the time before. So um, it was very, very hard to replicate anything. Where when you pre-section like this, um, it's a bit like sat-nav. You know the journey that you're going to take, uh, which makes it very, very easy to replicate, makes it very, very easy to work to time. It makes it very easy to be creative because, you know, next time you might think, okay, I'm going to make that, you know, that section a bit asymmetric and that'll give me something different. So, um, yeah, that's the whole reason why we pre-section is to, is to make the whole thing more simpler, really. I mean, you said earlier that you found the pre-section a little bit of a struggle, didn't you? And I think when you start off, it does seem quite challenging, the pre-sectioning. But when you stick with it, like anything, and it becomes um, uh, simpler to do, you'll find that actually that pre-section will make all yeah. your work much easier. Because it's like a sat-nav. You know, you know where you, the route that it's going to take you. Yeah. And it'll get you to that uh, finish um, on time yeah. uh, and intact, if that makes sense. Yeah. Does that, does that <laughs> answer the question, Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah? Uh, someone's added to it. <clears throat> Tracy Paul Russell has said, uh, by such large sections? Well, to be quite honest with you, it all depends. Thank you for that, Tracy, that um, that's, uh, question. It all depends on what you're trying to achieve. You know, um, the pre-sectioning would be um, completely different for, you know, every haircut you're doing, really, all depending on what you're achieving. So with this, sec uh, with this section, it's quite simple. You know, we've just got one big section on the top. We're taking a little section away there that's going to be disconnected at the end. But then other haircuts, you know, there might be more intricate sectioning. So it really just is, depends on the kind of, the finished result you're going for. So I've just, um, I've just cross-sectioned this, um, cross-checked it, sorry, uh, to make sure that that's all balanced and it is. So I'm happy with that now. So I've got my one length line fully intact but I'll have a little bit of graduation on that now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to work to a pivot. So this is very similar to the short asymmetric that we teach on level three. I'm going to start to pivot. If you come over here, Luke, yeah. what we're going to do now is we're going to literally pivot from this point now, and we're going to pivot all the way around. And what that's going to do, it's just going to give me a roundness moving to the front and it's also going to encourage the hair to be more one length as it comes to the front. So, and what I want to do now when I pull this hair up, I was very, very aware when I was pulling this hair out to mirror the section that I was doing with my comb and with my finger angle. And I'm going to be doing exactly the same now. I want to mirror um, this sectioning with my... Um, with my comb and my finger angle. So my body now is start to move slightly around to the side of the head. I'm gonna stay behind the ear the whole, uh, the whole way through this side. If I moved any nearer to the front, I would then start to graduate more from the front. So keeping my body here means that I'm gonna automatically over direct this hair um, back, which is gonna maintain the, is gonna maintain the, um, the length and the graduation. So you can see I'm mirroring this now with my finger angle and my comb. So there's not an awful lot coming off of this. It's quite subtle, but it will make a nice bit of difference at the end. So we're just going to pivot. We're just pivoting. So the, we're not actually going to move any nearer to the front with this section. This section is going to stay there. It's this bottom section that's going to start to move uh, nearer to the front. So then, Adam, do you like what you see so far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
on the desired look, doesn't it? Yeah. So, um, yeah. With, with, tell me this, Adam. With, with men's barbering, would you say that modern men's barbering, um, there is a lot of sectioning going on, or there, is there not? It's quite contentious, that one, because I think a lot of traditional barbers don't like it. You've got, you've got conflicting styles nowadays. I mean, obviously, you know, uh, one of our feds, Josh Lamonica, loves to section everything. Mm. He does, and uh, you know he's, he's technically brilliant. There's a lot of traditional barbers would not do that. You know, they, 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 why would they do it? Is that because they're stuck in the way? It's because, it's because uh, you know it's been passed down through their training, and that's that's how they would go about it. But obviously, lot long hair, you would have to have. You know, you, for, for me, you would have to be sexy. Yeah, the hair for that. You know, you, you need a start, a middle, and an end, don't you? You, you? you need a plan to work from. Yeah. Um, but you know, obviously, traditional barbers. Um, you know, and. You know, I think that's one of the things that I, I love about the industry. You've got different genres of, of barbering, and uh, you know, you, you know, you, they can all end up at the same destination. But it's very contentious at the minute, uh, as, as Aaron was saying at the minute, with with the sectioning. You know, because you've got a lot of the young barbers that have come up that probably had very, very good hairdressing training. Mm -hmm. To be fair, absolutely. Well, it blows me away when when we first went into some of those traditional barber shops together back in the old men's men's we started the first, yeah. federation days. That there's a lot of barbers that they don't even pick the hair up, Lee. Do you know what I mean? They don't even put hair in their fingers. Like big shout out to Damo if he's watching. Yeah, I mean, Damo is a protagonist of. Yeah. He's never picked up a bit of hair in his life. It's all done she's through right scissors and scissor over comb. But just, just a good result. Oh, Fantastic it's amazing. Result. Fantastic. It's amazing. Result. I mean, but it was so alien to me. Do you know what I mean? I've spent yeah. my entire career picking hair up with my fingers. Yeah. Who's uh, who's Joe Sloan? It's, uh, it's, yeah. I think that <laughs> said, Adam knows him. I want to cut. <clears throat> I want to ask Karen a question. When, <laughs> when, when can we see Lee cut Karen's hair live? Oh, that is a good one. I want to see that as well. Uh, no, I have asked Rick. No, because Joe's already said if it, if you, if he asked a question, he said earlier. He said if I ask a question, would I win any products that will grow my hair back? And yeah, he's just smarting because I responded. We're giving away products, not miracles. <laughs> and, and that reminds me, we are yeah. doing two competitions. We're doing two competitions. The first competition is someone that can replicate the haircut that I'm doing tonight, the best replication of this haircut. You've got two weeks uh, to send in your pictures uh, and we'll send you a nice goodie bag of products. The second competition is um, all the people that are asking questions uh, tonight, thank you very much. We're going to pick a question out at random and we're going to send out a nice big goodie bag of products. So keep the questions coming in. Just want to have a little recap on what I've done so far. So, so far, this haircut is it's going to be a you're going to love it because it's simple, it's fast, it's kooky, but it's commercial again, right? So, what I've done around the bottom here, this is a one length below. It's the first haircut that most hairdressers learn on an apprenticeship or a college. So that's what that is below there. It's gonna be mashed up with a long grey, but a kind of short long grey, if that makes sense. Uh, and the top's gonna to be very, very disconnected uh, from the underneath. So, so far we've put in a graduate, we've put in a one leg below, and now I'm going through it, and I'm just putting a little bit of graduation in. So this, this part here through the middle, I pulled it straight out, and just cut a straight line down using the occipital bone the length there is my guide. I just took off a little bit of hair above it to give me a little bit of graduation there. I then worked vertically to then points of that triangle. Can you see them points there? All the way down, just pulled it straight out from the head. And this side, I've pivoted. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. So if you'd like to come around here, Luke. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm doing now, so this isn't going to travel any further here. This is going to stay there. It's just the bottom that is gonna travel now as I pivot around. And that pivot is gonna keep um, keep length at the front and it's gonna give me some rounded graduation going into that. Front. Can I get a close up on that pivot again? Just sure, so, so the, the sections have been vertical so far. So now the next one is gonna go to there mm -hmm. and it's gonna go to there. All from the same point. All from that same point at the top. So that's that point there isn't gonna travel anywhere. It's gonna stay there. It's only gonna travel at the bottom. That makes sense? So it's, it's a very, very classic um, technique, this. 
um, that you would use in a lot of graduation, um, especially a graduated bob. And that's what I'm doing here, really. I'm doing a very long graduated bob. So as I pull this out now, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that my fingers are mirroring what's going on here. Because the benefit of, of this is that if I make sure that it's mirroring on both sides, I'm going to get the balance on both sides. If I, if I did something different on this side, I'm going to get something different. So that's a very good check just to make sure that your fingers are following the same as the sectioning. And then you know that you'll get the same as what you've got on the other side. Does that make sense, girls? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. So I'm just pivoting around. This, I haven't got as much hair on this side because we've um, got that piece uh, sectioned out of the way because that is going to be, um, that's going to be disconnected from... I've got a question. Ooh. Question. Why do you prefer to space burn rather than crocodile clip? Uh, so, yeah, so why would I use... Um, uh, a bun rather than a crocodile clip. Well, that's a good question. Um, so the reason why I like to do a bun like this, what do you think, first of all? What do you think I would... What, what is... What, what, Strayer, how does it look? Very cleaner. It looks clean yeah, and neat, yeah. doesn't it? But, you know, if you end up putting a big crocodile clip in there, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's not clean, and hair starts to sprout out and come out, it's, it, it, it makes your job ten times harder because you can't see what you're doing. So getting that out of the way really, really clean means that I can seal this area that I'm working on really, really well. So, in a nutshell, it may, it, having it clean like that makes, you, makes your work easier yes. to do. Um, so, I've just gonna, got a couple more sections now, and then we'll be moving onto the top. Did that last week, maybe not the blockhead over, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> While he was clipping a, a line. Yeah. So you still do, um, you do men, men, men's and ladies, don't you, Adam? What, me? Yes. yes. So I'm just reading some of your comments. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, still do, still do about 50 hours a week in the summer. Yeah. Uh, love it, really. absolutely love it, you know. I, mean, uh, uh, I don't know if people know, but um, I, uh, I I think I went to Lee's first seminars. You did? Was that, was that back in the Hadley days, did you come, was it? When we, no, the, I, 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 we I, did I, them at the house that hair built. That's right, when we was there. And yeah. You and Steve Turner and uh, we Steve did it on Steve. Sunday, didn't we? Yes, fantastic. Yeah, actually, fantastic. And, yeah, you know, um, yeah, it's like a long time. Ago. A long time. Ago. Every Sunday it was. Uh, they were good days, mate, weren't they? Some great people there. Yeah, um, they really did. Stacey brought them. Yeah. Who, Mark, uh, Smith. Mark Smith. Dale, Dale Ted Watkins. Dale Watkins. Ad Feelan. Ad Feelan. Martin yes. Holmes. Yes. Yeah, there was uh, a lot of good people Dibbins, there. Wasn't there? John, John Johnny Dibbins. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. Okay, so that's finished, guys. So it's the one length below, nice and simple, with a little bit of graduation. So that's kind of like a long graduated pop. So that's done now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some clips in this, just so that when I start cutting the top, it won't. I won't get mucked up. It won't kind of you know mingle in with all this hair, and I won't lose my way. So by sticking some clips in it like this. I know whatever happens with that top, it's not going to melt in. So if you'd like to come on the other side, Luke. Yeah. I've got Joe trolling me now. No. What, Joe that was here last Joe's, time? No, Joe Sloan. All right. He's good old Karen sweeping up. Can we get him over <laughs> the next line? Love you, Joe. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to concentrate on the front section to begin with. Do you want me to get in there close? Um, no, uh, wait, let me just get this out of the way and combed up, then I might get you in close, Luke. Cool. So I'm just going to start on this front piece to begin with. I've done like a vertical section um, on the top there. So this is where this classic long grad comes in now. So we're going to pull this all the way up. And what I'm looking at, so I'm cutting it with my fingers on a 45 degree angle. And what I'm looking for here is that when the hair drops, I want that first front bit. Can you see this, Luke? I want this to be where the lip is there. So that's a little bit too long. So I'm going to cut that a little bit shorter. 
See, normally our long grad, we would start in the middle and then we would put everything up to that middle piece. So this is gonna be slightly on the asymmetric, but it's the same principle. So if I comb this down, it's kind of on the lip there, right? So that's where we want it. I'm then gonna to go to the back piece, combing it all the way up, keeping my finger angle at 45 degrees. And now my checkpoint is gonna be that eye, right in the middle of that eye. That's where I'm pulling everything up. So I've got to blow my nose, I've got a terrible cold. Um, so rather than me sniff the whole way through this. In the meantime, Lots of questions being asked. Um, we've got actually a barber in the room. Where's Jones? He, uh, he asks, are any of these techniques you're showing us tonight applicable on the barbershop floor? Um, this haircut I'm doing here, I think would look really cool corner guy actually. And you'll see the finished result, but you know, a guy with long hair. Editorial sort of. I mean, if the finished look of this, it looks quite commercial. Yeah. It looks kind of kooky, that's what I love about it. It looks kooky, but it's very wearable. Mm -hmm. And I think you could do it on a guide, most definitely. So the next section is I'm mirroring what I've just done. So I've just taken a section right the way through the top there, vertical section, and now I'm gonna be pulling this, just working on the front bit again to begin with. So not picking it all up in one go. So now this is gonna be pulled. So I wanna be combing it this way. So if I was combing it this way, you could tend to do this. And that's not what we want, we're gonna over direct it this way. So you can comb it that way by all means, but the last comb that you do, oops, this uh, clip's getting in the way. I can go there. Wants to come from this way so that you're over-directing it towards you. And then your check wants to be the eye again. So I'm looking at the eye. My fingers want to be pointing straight to the floor, like we do on the classic long grad. So literally just going straight through the eye there. Again, you can, you can pull it up this way, but just make sure Um, the last comb is pulling towards you. Fingers vertical. So it's nice and simple, nice and simple. You're not looking for balance here. You don't want both sides of the top to be symmetrical because we're over directing it. It's going to be a build up of weight, so it's going to get longer over this side of the head. Do you prefer quite more avant garde looks to commercial? That's a good question. I mean, to be quite honest with you, in the early days, when I was sort of really um, sort of making a name for myself, mm -hmm. it was all about trying to do things as crazy as I could. Um, and to be quite honest here, back in those days, I didn't really have the technical ability to do crazy things that look beautiful. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, but I tried all the time. But now, what I try to focus on now more than anything is something that's wearable. You know, because what I've realised is, is that you can do all these crazy looks and they, they're very inspirational. I still love watching people do them. You know, I'll go to Sassoon's and other places like that and I'll sit there excited watching them. And it's brilliant that you still need all of that, of course. But there's so little for people to actually take away and use in a day-to-day -day environment because, number one, they haven't got the ability to copy it. Yeah. And number two, that their clients don't really want that, you know? So what I try to focus on now is, um, is something that um, is wearable. You could actually go and do this on one of your clients, which is quite hard to do as well because you're trying to do something that's got a little bit of a kooky, sort of interesting vibe to it, but it's very wearable commercial. So um, I think they're both just as challenging to be quite honest, yeah? 
but yeah, so it, it's not really about avant-garde for me now. I'm trying, I mean, even though, I, in, in the end, I've dressed out two of these looks. I've done one that is quite natural and um, simple, and I've done one that is a bit more avant-garde. <laughs> but I've only done that for a bit of fun, really, you know, yeah. just a bit of fun, just to show you um, just a different take on it, really. And that's so true with most hair that you cut. You know, you could dress it out to make it, you know, as long as it weren't a crazy cut, to look more avant-garde by the way you dress it out, you know? You could get the simplest of haircuts, but you could dress it out quite avant-garde, couldn't you, you know? So I'm just going through this top, another vertical section, <clears throat> keeping the sections nice and clean as I'm working. Just working on that front bit first. Are you with me on this, girls? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah? So I'm just pulling this towards me, making sure that my finger is running through the eye, keeping my body position in the same position and keeping my fingers pointing to the floor. So this top bit is gonna be completely disconnected from, well saying that's not gonna be completely disconnected, I'm gonna connect it slightly to this piece that's around here. Do you see this piece here? I will do. Blue? So I'm gonna be connecting this top to this piece here, but it's not gonna be connected to, anyway, oh God, here come the kids. I can hear them, I can hear them. No, maybe. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, Wait, hide the sweets. Hide the sweets, guys. There they are. Hello, you. <laughs> Is that my little angel? Is that my little Elvis? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Have you got your bedtime milk? Hey. Is it partial bedtime? Yeah. Oh, oh, no. hide. Quick hide. Hide from mummy, guys. Don't <laughs> let her see ya. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's the thing in this house. You've got five floors and you can just lose the kids. Like the car for me. So now you can see around here, Luke, if you come to this, like right at the back there, you can see yeah. how much I'm over-directing that now. Oh, okay, yeah. So you see how I'm over-directing that, making sure that my finger is running through the eye, and my finger angle is always pointing down to the floor. So we've only got two more sections here, and this top is done. Any questions, Al? Yeah, I've got one. Um, it's relevant to this section you're cutting right now. Yeah. Mary Travis, she asks, would you <laughs> change the top section for the client if she had a different parting? Hmm, that's, that's, uh... Hello, darling. Hello, my sorry. wife. Say hello, Jess. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were see me. Come on back. Well, I mean, because I'm over-directing this... Stan! Whee! Because I'm over directing this over here. Come on, come on. Guys, come on, come on. You can see, Luke, if you come, come, here, come here, because I've got that over direction, if you look at the front there, yeah. you can see how that's starting to go on the asymmetric there, right? Yeah. So, to be quite honest, yeah, this haircut could be worn. I mean, you probably, the natural feel would be to wear it on that side because the asymmetry is going that way, but you could still wear it on the other side. So um, if, if, he, if, if someone had, was wearing that parting on this side, then you, 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 what you could do is you could turn the whole section around so this piece I left out was over there and you might be able to do that first short section on this side Sure. Rather than that size, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, if they've got like maybe a cow's lick, which yeah. you know means that they can wear their yeah. hair one way rather than the other. 
I suppose you can. You, you can could definitely, that. you could definitely start on this side and pull everything that way. Sure. Um, but it would. St- the way I'm cutting it now, she could still wear it on, or he could wear it on um, on either side. So I've got one more section to do, and this top is done. So any questions on this top section, ladies? I mean, I've got the mighty Diane Mitchell watching oh, as well. Okay. She did, she asked a question. She asked why uh, why a triangle section on the top and not a horseshoe. Uh, well, that's a, thank you, Diane, for that question. Um, well, it is actually a horseshoe section on top. All I've done is taken out a triangle section uh, on the crown there. And the reason why I've done that is because this section on top is going to be pretty much completely disconnected from the underneath, and I'm cutting it on the asymmetric, this back is going to fall like that. So taking out that triangle section just breaks up that line a little bit. The line isn't quite as obvious. There's a little bit of a sort of chink in the road. Um, so that's the only reason why that's there, really, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, I've got another question as well. I think Damien heard us all the way over here. Damien Hurst has got no, a question. No, no. Damien Hurst. <laughs> <laughs> got this Facebook Live's really coming on. <laughs> so this is Damien, who I was telling you about, who just cuts through his comb and never picks up his... Oh, is that right? Up. Yeah, he's asked, so how important do you think it is to keep your sections thin and reliant to your oh. own finger length? Well, that's a good question, because back in the day, I remember when I used to go on the Sassoon courses, you know, uh, back at the 80s, you know, it was all like really, really small sections, you know. Um, but now, really, you want, you only want to take a set. If you take them too small, you will be there forever, right? And really, you only need to take a section um, as big so you can see the previous section through it. Mm. If your section's too fat and you are using your previous section as a guide, you won't be able to see it. You know, so you just want to be able to make sure that you can see your previous section through the next section you've picked up. So it doesn't need to be too fine. If it's too fine, you'll be there forever. You know, I'd rather have slightly thicker sections, but as long as I can see, not thick sections, but I just need to see that, 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 that previous section. Does that make sense? But thanks for that question, mate. That's great. Um, okay, so if you come here, Luke, you'll be able yeah. to see now, um, if I comb this forward, You'll be able to see, because we've got all that over direction here, we've got that asymmetry through there. Um, also, you know, if we take a piece from there, and there's the piece on top, you'll see that that's very disconnected from that piece there. Um, the same as it will be around here. You know, that length we've got there is very disconnected. So the top isn't connected to the underneath at all, apart from this section I'm going to do here. If you come around here, Luke, yeah. you'll be able to see that we've got this little section here. So I'm going to take that out now. Let's get my magic water spray. Oh, I love it. I'll get a wide shot on that. Look at that. <laughs> Just keeps giving. I've <laughs> <laughs> got no hand on, no finger on it, right? <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to do with this is we are going to take a section through the top there, put a clip in there, take a section through there. So there's only going to be two sections here. Get that out of the way. So we're going to pull. If you want to come just here, Luke, you'll be able to see this better. Okay. As we pull this up, I'm going to use that. There's the piece that I've cut there. You can see it just there. So just with a shank of my scissor, just going to connect that. So that piece is connected to the top, but then the piece at the bottom is going to be disconnected from the underneath. I'm going to leave that disconnected. You could very well connect that so that it's a complete true one length uh, below. Um, 
but just for a bit of fun, I'm going to leave that a bit disconnected. And then we're going to go here. This is the last section here. So pick that piece up. I've already cut that piece. And where's the, the guide bit that you're... So the guide's going to be this piece. You're getting real savvy with all this, <laughs> this terminology now. So I'm pulling that up. So you can see that that's the first section that I cut on top. So with a shank and my scissor. So I'm not, I'm not using my scissors how you would do conventionally. I'm not doing that using the shank and the scissor again. So I'm cutting it just like you would do a piece of cloth or, um, or a piece of paper. Okay, so that's all done. Let's take all these clips out. I've got a question from Ellie Dorwood. Yeah. Uh, she asked, that, you know that first section you took right at the very front, yeah. uh, which um, kind of sets up that entire top, top yeah. section, doesn't it? Um, she asked, uh, what is the shortest you would recommend going on that first section? Well, that's a very good question. Section. And I've only done this haircut probably half a dozen times. So, so far, the shortest I've gone is the lip to there. I'm sure you can take it shorter. Um, I haven't done, but please send me some pictures if you try. Um, I'd like to see what it looks like. Um, I'm sure it'll be a little bit stronger because you've got to imagine, the shorter you take it here, the more, the stronger this shape's going to be because you've got this one length look long look here so the shorter you take that the more extreme it's going to look so it all depends what you're looking for if you want something that's soft and commercial probably leave that longer if you want something that's going to be a bit stronger and more powerful then you can take it shorter so that's you know, that's what i would just think about when approaching the length that you're going to pick okay so that cut is done the let me just recap again we've cut a one length line at the bottom so a classic one length line that you would do your first haircut at college or an apprenticeship. Then we've just graduated it slightly so that we've still got that one length vibe, but we've got a little bit of graduation running through it. Um, the top section, we cut our first section like we would do a long graduation on the side of the head, the shortest piece being at the mouth there. And then we pull basically everything over to meet that and then we cut with then we did, had a little piece here that went from that section there to the front um, of the ear and we've just connected that short piece there to um, the underneath but let it fall so if you see around here what we've got Lou we've got a little bit of disconnection so that's the haircut so rather than me spending a bit of time blow drying this off I did one earlier <laughs> so let me get it here yeah, I've got a really interesting question here. It's not unrelated to the cut, but it's Joe again. Yeah. He's asked you, Lee, uh, what, what would you say is the most defining moment in your career? Oh, God. I mean, there's no doubt about it. The most defining moment was when I won Men's British Champions of the Year. I mean, winning Men's British Champions of the Year changed my life forever. You know, I went from being a... Uh, uh, kind of well-known hairdresser in Essex to being a well-known hairdresser, um, you know, in the UK and, you know, all over the world, really. And getting that job on, sorry, getting winning that award also got me my first TV gig on this morning, which was a life-changing uh, time for me. And getting that gig on this morning got my product range launched in boots. So there's no question that winning Men's British Hairdresser of the Year was the most defining moment of my life. So... Okay, so I've dried this off quite naturally. Uh, I did try drying it off first uh, straight, and I just thought, you know what, it just, it just, it didn't feel right straight. So I've dried it off much more natural. And all I want to do now is just go through it and just take off some of these, um, these blunt lines. Because up until now, if you come around here, <coughs> up until now, everything's been cut um, very, very bluntly. You can see through there, can't you? So I just want to, just go in and just loosen this up a little bit, just to make it a little bit more worn in. 
So I don't want to take big chunks off of this. But I just want to give it, like I say, a slightly warning feeling. And mainly through the top, really, because the underneath, I want this to still feel very heavy and blunt. Just want to just loosen this top off a little bit and just get rid of them really blunt lines. So this, this head I've got here has been cut exactly the same length as the one that I've just cut, but I've just dried this one off just to save a bit of time. And what I'm being very conscious of here as well is that when I'm picking up the hair to texturize it, I'm not picking up the previous hair that I've cut. Because if I keep doing that, if I brought it all over to my first section, um, like how I blunt cut it, it would mean that first section would constantly be um, thinned out and it would become really, really light. So I'm just making sure that when I pick up this hair, it's not what I've cut previously. I've never seen you use any thinning scissors. Um, no, I mean, I, 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 do you know what? Just recently, I have got into thinning scissors, using them on men's. It makes it a lot easier, doesn't it, Adam? Yeah. It really does. You know, you get a pair of thinning scissors and all of a sudden it's like, wow, you know, really softens it out. But no, I didn't. I came from a very um, Sassoon sort of background. You know, so at Sassoon's, you know, back in the day, it was, it was all scissors, you know. Um, but, you know, and it's the same as, um, um, it's the same as uh, razors. I never use razors, but I mean, people do use razors brilliantly, don't they? You know, um, I mean, you know, if, if, you, if you can cut hair with a knife and fork well, then, then go for it, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, <laughs> That's the modern world we live in, you know. I'm not. Uh, it's just the way I've le learned. It's quite. Um, it's quite old school, you know. What made you start entering competitions? Um, well, what happened was I opened up my first. Well, I opened up my first big shop in uh, Leon C, and we opened up the shop. And it was a very, very exciting time. And after um, about a year of the shop being opened. It was like, right, that was a really exciting time, but what do we do next, you yeah. know? Um, and so we decided to, uh, to enter the British Hairdressers Awards, you know? Um, and I think entering competitions is, uh, it, it, it's, it's a fantastic thing to do because, you know, it really, it really enhances your work because to enter a competition, it means you've really got to practice what you're doing and, you know, which is only ever good for your technique. Yeah. And it's just very exciting to enter competitions, you know. It gets the, it gets the, it gets your fires burning, doesn't it? You know, um, and if you win, like you won a competition, yeah. the first competition you ever entered, you're here. Yeah. That's, but, that's a positive thing, isn't it? You know, you're here and you're meeting right. some influential people, and yeah. you got to be in it to win it, you? you got to be in it to win it, you know. Um, <laughs> Any other questions, Al? Yeah, I've got a couple. Um, oh. Kelly Farder, she says, how did you come up with the name of this haircut? She's studying at South Side College. Well... And she wants to know when you're coming back. <laughs> coming back soon, don't worry. Um, I mean, it just felt very playful, and it felt fun, this haircut. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it felt like a tease to me. Um, and it was long, um, so, you know, the long tease just felt appropriate. What's that? What's that? This product? is a bit of sea salt, um, these stuff of sea salt. So what I'm doing is just uh, putting it on my hands and dressing out the hair. Um, just so I'm using my fingers to dress it out, but also, you know, I've got some, I've got some, uh, I've got some product on my fingers. So I want this just to be real. I mean, you could you could dress this out. However, I mean, you could you could straighten it. You know, you could tong it more. I, I did go through this a little bit with the tongs, just a little bit, just to put a slight little bend in it. And you know, obviously the tongs, you know, put you know, give it a bit of quality as well. So I did 
I did go through it with the tongs just a little bit. But you know, I just thought this looked better just with a bit of texture and a bit more natural. So as you can see, even though that top is very disconnected, it doesn't look that disconnected when it's finally done. It does kind of melt in, but you still get this very kind of one length vibe to the finish. So you can see what I mean by this. If you'd have cut this shorter here, it would have been a much stronger look. And if you'd have left that longer, it's a much softer look. So um, I think using that lip as a, as a guide is quite a good reference um, to start off with anyway, when you first do it. So you've got this bit of disconnection around the bottom here, but that can be, that could be, um, that could be connected, or you can leave it a bit more kooky. So this is the finished look, dried off very natural. I wanna show you another look now. What I've done with this look I'm gonna share with you now is I plaited the underneath, just to give it a bit of texture on the underneath, and I tonged the top, um, just to give it, a, a, it's exactly the same haircut, it's exactly the same lengths, but, um, but just dressed differently. There we go, it's a bit of a reveal here. <laughs> so. I think I should have this haircut. This is the one yeah. for me. This is I the think. one for you, mate. Dressed yeah, out like this. I think this is, my, this is what I should do. So, okay, admittedly, this one, probably the way it's dressed, isn't as commercial. It's definitely fun. Um, and it's definitely interesting. This one has just been dressed out much more commercial. So even though we've got a lot of um, disconnection in it, like I say, you can't really see that um, when it's finished. So what this is, both these haircuts are a one length below with a little bit of graduation at the back and the top is a long graduation that's all been pulled over to one side. And then just this side bit was connected, um, but left disconnected at the bottom. So there you have it, guys. Can I get them both here? So you certainly can. can. These are the long tees. They are both exactly the same shapes. Well, what do we think, guys? Send us some wows if you're liking the finishes. Tell us what one you prefer. And also, let us know if you're going to be trying this in college or in the salon next week. I know Adam Sloan is definitely doing this haircut because <laughs> I've already bet him that he's going to. So we're doing a competition, <coughs> New South Wales Education. Uh, it's doing a um, national uh, competition. You girls <coughs> entering? <laughs> and um, the, the students are picking one of the haircuts that I've done on Facebook Live to enter this competition. So this could be well be one of the haircuts that you pick for that competition. Uh, like I said, I would love everyone to enter that Lee Stafford education competition. The students that are going to one of my academies. It's a great thing to do competitions because it really makes you focus on your technique, uh, which is only going to be great for your career. It's a great buzz, these competitions, and it really gets you noticed. So have a go, guys. So that's it from us lots at the Stafford's household. Um, Adam Sloan, Jade, Rosie, my cousin Karen, <laughs> Luke on camera, <laughs> Lee Stafford, the same good night, guys. Remember, the first Sunday of every month at 6 p.m. Happy New Year, everybody. See you soon. Bye. Bye. See ya.